Hey there, and thanks for tuning in. Welcome to a new episode of the Technology Addicts Podcast by Avnet Abacus. Most electronic devices we use today are hard, rigid, and fragile. Now, look inside them and you'll see why. The circuits that make them work sit on a solid printed circuit board, or PCB. It's a constraint that limits not only how we design our devices, but also how we interact with them. But what if it didn't have to be that way? Enter flexible electronics, circuits printed onto flexible substrates, enabling a whole new realm of technological designs that save space, simplify assembly, and unlock new, less invasive, and much more intuitive use cases. Despite their potential, flexible electronics are still relatively unknown compared to their rigid counterparts. And it's unfortunate because this lack of familiarity means that device manufacturers are barely scratching the surface of their true potential. And that's why we've invited two experts from Molex, a leading supplier of flexible electronics and printed circuits, to talk about what it takes to build innovative solutions using these technologies. Vladimir Punt is Europe Business Manager in Flexible and Printed Electronics at Molex. So thanks, Vladimir, for joining us. Thank you. And Adrian Arsufi is Business Development Manager for Printed Circuit Solutions at Molex. Hey, Adrian, welcome to the podcast. Glad to be here. And finally, we're once again joined by Sarah Gaemi, Director of Technical Development at Avnet Abacus. Hi, Sarah. It's great to have you back in the studio. Hello, Jan. It's a pleasure to be here again. So, Vladimir, tell us, what's so new about flexible and printed electronics? I mean, we've been working with printed circuit boards for decades. Yeah. Thanks. Um, I will uh, start with a small uh, story. Since I have been involved myself for about two decades in uh, electronics and semiconductors, and the last eight years at Molex in flexible and printed electronics. It feels sometimes confusing when we say printed circuit boards, eh? because we all know that a PCB, as we know it today, a printed circuit board, this green motherboard in our equipment is not printed. And so I, I go a little bit back in time, if I may. When I was a young guy, I'm Dutch from the Netherlands, I was always playing with my Philips experiment, uh, experiment boxes. And there you had to connect the components with uh, springs and wires. And this is in fact the same kind of solution when we go back in electronics 100 years ago. Yeah? At that time, you had a wooden substrate. You had to connect your electronic components with uh, metal bars and later wires. And 100 years ago, there were a lot of inventions and smart people trying to improve that. And you have to check Wikipedia. But it was until the 40s, 1940s, that, um, and I'm reading that from my paper, that an ocean inventor, his name was Paul Eisler, created a platform, what we know today, close to be a PCB. So what he did, he was printing special ink, special edge resistive ink as his circuit pattern to a piece of copper. So that means when he was using a chemical etching process, his target circuitry did not disappear. Yeah? And this is what we call a subtractive process. And this is what we know today closest to a PCB, a printed circuit board. Now, that process got very popular after the introduction of the transistor and other electronics after the 50s. But in parallel, there was also a need in the industry when there was a constraint in space, for instance, to try to come up with foldable or bendable electronics. And that was a birth of what we call today an FPC, flexible printed circuit. That technology is using the same subtractive process as with the PCB and is using then a flexible substrate, which can be a PI, poly image. So the name printed in that respect for a PCB comes from printing this edge resistive ink. But now the fun story is in the 20s, 1920s, and this is also think Wikipedia, there was an American inventor, Charles Dukas, he was already printing directly conductive circuitry and conductive traces on an insulation substrate. So this can be seen as the birth of what we call today printed electronics. Here we print, for instance by screen printing, directly the circuitry by conductive inks to a flexible PET substrate. So that is then another alternative in the printed electronics world to what we call a PCB or an FPC. And especially that ecosystem of printed electronics, or sometimes we call it hybrid printed electronics, when we also bond components to it, is a brand new industry. As an alternative for FPCs and PCBs, when something must be flexible, low weight, and also have 
attention to sustainability. All right. Thank you for this fascinating introduction. Adrian, so where does Molex fit into the picture then? At first, I want to mention them. Eh? You see, that's why I love working with seasoned people. Eh? You see, you got the historical courses, very nice. Eh? So Molex historically was based near to Paris. So I won't give you such a large piece of the history of PCV, but we used to do literally the printed keypad for those Nokia phones. So today we have many different manufacturing locations from Dongguan in China, from Taipei in Taiwan, in Naperville, Illinois, and even some PCBA assembly in Mexico, and some of even like the synergy of Molex, many molding manufacturing in Europe. So Molex is literally a brand. So we fit in that picture of printed electronics because we are not the very small supplier that will do prototype. But we are not the big CN that will build your complete car or your complete steering wheel ride. So we do foster consultative approach. So we could call ourselves an ODM. So we will directly partner with our customer. We will try to increase the added value at their place by providing insight, design knowledge, and also manufacturing knowledge. So our goal is literally to help our customer to scale from an idea to a finished product that is completely duplicable, replicable, and industrializable. Perfect. Okay. And Sarah, your role as technical director at Avenue Abacus gives you a bird's eye view on what's going on in the electronic sector. So could you share some of the overarching trends that you've observed surrounding these flexible and printed circuits? Yeah, sure. We're already energized with the energy the Molex partners are bringing to the podcast. So from our perspective, because we are in touch, obviously, with a lot of customers in the market, and we see a bigger picture where the trends are coming from and why they are coming. So obviously, I see that they are designs requiring more functionality and a smaller form factor these days. So even we are not talking about just miniaturization, we are talking about micro miniaturization because of all the trends and applications which are coming. And it is getting more and more important to have a faster time to market. In these dynamic days, these days, the customers cannot wait until the product comes to the market, but they need to bring it as fast as possible in order to reserve and book their kind of position at the customers, at their end customers. And what all designs require, they require more flexibility. They need to be lightweighted because of the nature of the application at the end of the day. And obviously they need to be low cost. And all these factors bring us to the point that we need to come up with the different solutions for those design challenges. And flexible PCBs are a solution for a lot of these design challenges that we are facing these days. If I take a look at the industry, for example, we take a look at the automotive industry, aerospace, medical devices, and industrial robotics, and also industrial applications in the harsh environment. So we see that these days, more and more sensors and electronics are involved everywhere. And for having a better space allotment, having a better thermal performance, having a suitable solution for, for example, aerospace area that they need a specific durability and reliability, or getting back to medical devices, for example, these days we are talking more and more about wearables, portable devices, telemedicine, all these things bringing us to have a smaller portable wearable devices and durability, reliability, flexibility, and a small form factor in all these applications play a big role. And we see actually this is exactly the place for having these flexible PCBs in place and solving the customer's design challenges. Vladimir, if we zoom in a little, could you outline the diversity of applications that already depend on flexible electronics for our listeners, just to give them a, an overview of what's out there today? Yeah, but I will more or less confirm as Sarah already uh, explained. You know, if you think about the challenges out there with one already mentioned form factor, it could also be other or sustainability factors. It could also be challenges in the assembly at our customer side. Flexible electronics do offer benefits, which can be related to the cost of ownership, which can be related to the quality of the performance, or as mentioned, sustainability. And we see the use of flexible and printed electronics today in a real variety of applications. Sarah already mentioned, right? It can be medical, automotive. It can be in the energy sector. It can be consumer. Right, really from a steering wheel in a car to an insulin pump in medical. 
And in which markets or applications do you or, or does Molex see most potential for growth in the years to come? I'll give you one example for the future. I think also Sarah mentioned, if we look to the uh, remote healthcare, also a little bit amplified by the times of the COVID times or the pandemic, we see a lot of awareness and ideas and recognition to have a smart skin sensors, so non-invasive skin patches, in order to help patients or even youth for wellness applications. So this is something coming up. So a lot of partners, a lot of companies in the industry are active here. But maybe more on the short notice, we see a wealth of applications out there related to what we call HMI, human machine interfaces, yeah? done with different technologies, with different solutions. And in many cases, there is a need for flexible and predictable electronics in those. Adrian, let's take some more time to look at these human machine interfaces, which are transforming the way we interact with technology in our daily lives. What makes flexible electronics such a perfect fit for HMIs? So it's a very good question. Eh? So as mentioned, you have many different aspects. So we had sustainability, we had robustness, cost of ownership. So let me give you a few examples. So for instance, even when Sarah is mentioning, we need it to be lighted. So that's fantastic because every kind of need expressed by one of the person in the company, it could be marketing. Yeah, we need something backlighted. So let's make it right. Let's have a substrate that will be conductive and transparent at the same time. Then Sarah mentioned about rough environment. Oh, we have a UV exposure that is very tough for our plastic or our rubber for our system. So anything that you could interact with, it could be an LED, it could be literally a button, needs to sustain and reply to certain specification, either for market, people, whatever. So that's what about, I'm about to say. You need to have this flexible electronic that is literally flexible enough to adapt to what people are expecting. Maybe Vladimir, can you tell us a bit about uh, the frequency controller that you worked on? Yeah, you feel that we are really focusing on what we call consultative design. Eh? And everything we do is custom design. Every product we do is unique. So the example here is, for instance, an industrial uh, partner who is looking for a real smart HMI solution. It must be thin and flexible so he can mount it on his box, right? It must be mounted on the box in a smooth way. It must have graphics. It must have an interaction. It has logos. It has colors. It has lights. And then it has certain buttons, right? So you can have an, an interaction with haptic feeling buttons, or even in this case, in this project, with a kind of slider, like a rotation wheel that some of us remember from the first iPods. And then in addition to that, the whole electronic software, radio and antenna is then included in one device, exactly how the customer would like to have it. So this is just one example. Sometimes I call this a smart HMI solution. It's not just a component, it's a complete subsystem. We have many examples of those. Adrian, maybe, maybe you can highlight this example, what, what we sometimes call as uh, the HMI looking like a Christmas tree. Oh, yeah. So one day a customer reached out to us. Yeah, we need something very small. That could have been the size of a 10 by 5 centimeter. That will fit on the helicopter. That will be exposed to water, blood. That will need the medical grade. And we need to put 100 LEDs on it. We're like, hey, let's see what we can do, right? <laughs> we are magician, but uh, maybe not that much. Huh? So we had to discuss with customer again, bring like a different technology, it took, could have been printed, it could have been based on the FR4 with a flexible substrate, it could have been literally printed. So again, as mentioned by Vladimir, our consultative approach leads us to present different solutions with different costs, opportunity to industrialize, to really fit customer expectation. So many different stuff to look at from that HMI world. So, Maybe I can give like a, also a hint to Vladimir to talk about the smart surfaces. I think that would be a perfect topic for you to capture the essence of printed electronics. Huh? Yeah, probably you do that because you tell me I'm the, the older guy, right? And then I come down with my story of who remembers the first iPhone in 2007. That was when we all started to swipe on a display, right? 2007 was the first time. And then the touch displays become very popular. And since then, especially the younger generation or Adrian's generation, 
They want to touch everything, piece of wood, piece of plastic. And so it happened. This is what we call a smart surface. It's not just a display. It can also be a surface for a washing machine. It can be also in your car, in automotive. And we see it all over. So you have printed, flexible, functional foils being integrated in your washing machine or in a car or in any other equipment. And if you have a dead front, we call that the dead front, you don't even see anything until the whole equipment is backlighted. And you can see, hey, there is a button, hey, there is a slider. Like an automotive, it is extremely popular and often also combined with an activation sensor. So it's not just touch, but in the system, there is a kind of activation sensor. So you can move your finger around with your smartphone and you activate it by a certain pressure. So, and this is what we call, or what is called in the industry often, smart services. So that already sounds very futuristic. I was going to ask him to look further into the future. What is in the pipeline? Can you give us a sneak peek into any upcoming innovations, fresh ideas, or emerging trends that our listeners should be on the lookout for? And I'll let all three of you take a stab at this one. Yep, maybe I will start just to complement that smart server story. Since what we see in the industry are many ideas how to further develop that topic of smart services. One of it is in mold electronics. Imagine I could integrate this printed functional foil, the printed electronics fill, directly in the plastic mold with the graphics. So then I could create a kind of real 3D objects with the same experience as having a two-dimensional smartphone. So there are many partners and players in the industry investigating this. There are a couple of challenges in the industry to cope. Think about cost and certain process scrap rates, and also the topic of sustainability, how to tackle that. But this is just one of the innovations that we can see. And if I might add on top of that, we also see that innovation is, of course, like a very technology driven. So you add hand mold, you add like skin patches, but you could also find like a process innovation. So for instance, before we used to know all of those batteries that were connected with cables leading to increased power, series parallel. Now at Mordex, we've been able to provide an assembly based on FPC that will interconnect with a very small geometrical factor and basically an interconnection system that will be printed, molded, lasered, welded. So that's fantastic. Everything could be done that just a limit of processes, minds, and also people. Sarah, is there anything that comes to mind in terms of what's in the pipeline? Yeah, you see, everything is getting smaller. Everything is bringing much more performance into the market and the data transfer is getting much faster. And it is so amazing how the technology is improving and how we are driving to the direction that we don't see any borders in any type of innovative ideas we can have in our minds. And in that perspective, it is very important to have partners for the customers that they can support them to turn their ideas to reality. And I think the heads I see here in the screen today, they are these heads that they can support the customers to turn their the ideas to the reality. Thank you, Sarah. So then I give you a bonus. And if you participate in our ecosystem, you can see those ideas developing. Eh? I spoke before about skin patches, right? To do remote monitoring healthcare applications. Imagine the same thing for smart labels. I'm not speaking about smart labels in a supermarket for a box of salad or a shampoo. We are talking here about data logger smart labels for, let's say, objects with a certain value, where they must be flexible to mount them as a label, as a glue to a box or, a, or even a curved object. And they have a certain lifetime and a certain function. It can be a data logger with temperature in a certain duty cycle. So everything can be done with our capabilities to make it flexible. Either by an additive or subtractive technology, we can bolt components. We have access to thin film batteries. We can put the graphics on it. So the smart label is one of those innovations, which is still in developing phase, like the skin patches, but based on the capabilities, very well possible. It sounds like an innovation that could scale tremendously. So everything could use a smart label at some point in the future. It's fascinating. Now, Sarah, stepping back a little, this looks like one of these situations where an electronics distributor like Avnet Abacus can really make a difference and add value to the customers. Can you talk about that a little? 
Yes, definitely. We have heard from our partner Molex that they are in contact with the customer and they are supporting their customer with their needs and requirement. But obviously the bandwidth is not given there to go to every single customer into the market and try to get access to the customer, understand the customer, talk to the customer. It is where we jump in. This is on one side, our structure, which supports us a lot because we have a structure focus on the market segments. We get a better understanding of the customers in different market segments, like transportation, like industrial and medical market segment, smart city and infrastructure and aerospace and defense. So we have a lot of local experts and product specialists that they are in touch with the local customers regionally. They understand their needs. They talk to them. We have also a role of consultancy. We talk to the customer, we consult them and help them to find the right direction. Sometimes they think based on the marketing ideas they see, they think that this is the right technology for them, or they think it is the right way for them also to develop their products. But in reality, it is not. So with our product expertise and the market trend expertise, we are supporting our customers to find the right direction and we connect them to the right partners to support them as we also talked before to turn their ideas to reality so i think based on the technical support technical expertise market expertise and as well because it is also very important to bring the product to the customer so the supply chain the inventory and the logistic matters at the end of the day in order to create that product to be a product and see them in reality as a tangible product so after the Abacus is also supporting the customer with that. So it's all about bringing people and solutions together to turn ideas into reality in the end. So at the end of each episode of The Technology Addicts, and yes, we've reached the end, we ask our guests the same question. What would you say is your current technology addiction? It could be anything from a gadget that you recently bought to an entire field of technology that's captivated you. Vladimir, I'm sure... You have a bunch of technologies that have captivated you, but which one would you choose today? Yeah, well, I love gadgets. But still, for today's podcast, I will focus on my uh, working world of printed electronics. Because there is much more cooking that by many technology providers, wishes companies out there. So I have, for instance, here in my lab, I have all kinds of gadgets, or not gadgets, new technologies, like printed heaters. I have printed OLED displays. I have here seen from technology providers printed flexible photovoltaic cells, different type of printed batteries. Now, if you have it and you play with it, this speaks to the imagination, what you can do with it. But then, of course, from a marketing perspective, you have to find out where is the value. Yeah? But at least all those tools and all those, well, call it gadgets, but all those newer technologies are available. And if you're aware of it, you can develop new ideas together with your customers. Great. And Adrian, what would you say is your current technology addiction? Since I'm about to become a father, I had to dig uh, into all those technology, all those new stuff, right? Which is not a, a simple uh, diaper, right? So again, eh, if I stay in my world of uh, printed electronics, we've seen many different stuff. Eh? So even like a, a printed sensor into the diaper to see if it's wet. I'm very like uh, out to the ground. I don't need that to see if it is, if it is like somehow wet. So I see many stuff about connected health that you can get very patient about. For instance, I was looking about, hey, I should get a camera to see if my baby is okay. And I see that some people are actually manufacturing some connected socks to track your, your baby's sleep, to track the blood pressure, the health, whatever. So it's fascinating eh, because I'm pretty sure that if my mom had it, she would have made a great use of it, eh? even if I'm pretty healthy. <laughs> Congratulations on uh, everything. Thank you. We were playing in the past only with uh, some uh, audio baby phones, we call it, right? Now we are monitoring with uh, electronic socks. Yeah. Welcome to the future. Yeah. <laughs> and Sarah, now what, what about you? What is your current technology addiction? We know almost all of your addictions by now because of all the past episodes. Yeah, I need to come up always with new addiction, uh, Jan. I have motivation <laughs> to keep up with the new technologies coming. And the current one is a smart ring. So I couldn't really believe it with my eyes as I bought it and used it. It is really like a ring and also kind of a fashionable ring. 
And it is very smart. You can track the stress level every day, the sleep quality, a lot of health parameters you can imagine. And you see that how this flexible electronic is integrated in our life. It is a very nice fine ring with a printed battery and printed electronics. So you can imagine that how small the whole thing is. And uh, connected with the app that you can kind of track everything in your life. It is on one side good because you really understand yourself, your body, eventually the problems you might have. On the other side, you're getting too much sensible, <laughs> I think, to your daily parameters. You're getting every day about kind of concerned about why didn't I sleep well? What happened to my temperature? And you get more and more engaged with your health situation more than before. Yeah, I guess that's the dilemma of technology these days. With that, I'd like to thank Vladimir, Adrian, and Sarah for joining us for this episode of the Technology Addicts podcast. And dear listeners, if you'd like to get in touch with Vladimir, Adrian, or Sarah, you can reach out to them. You'll find all the contact information in the show notes. And to everyone listening, thank you for joining us today. And stay tuned for the next episode of the Technology Addicts. Thanks, Vlad. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.